Hello and welcome to my Ogre tutorial series. This episode will cover light tracked unit terrain effects, swamp, forest, and rubble. Swamp and rubble are identical for light tracked units. It's two movement points to enter, and any unit entering has a chance of being disabled on a roll of one or two. Forest is also two movement points to enter, but there's no chance of disabling. We have a light tank and a missile tank. These are the two main light tracked units in the game. For movement, the light tanks can move three hexes per turn, and the missile tanks can move two hexes per turn. So we're going to look at swamp and rubble first. So light tank moving here. This is a swamp. You'll notice it's red. A uh, rubble hex. This is also red. What this means is the game is warning you that you have the chance of being disabled if you move into one of these two hexes. You'll notice that the forest hexes do not show as red, and that's because there's no danger moving into the forest. They're just slower if they do. So give an example of what happens when you move into a swamp area. You have a die roll, and with a five, it's successful, but that unit is done with its movement for the turn. Try again, going into rubble. The roll for a three, it's also safe. So for a contrast, we can move into a forest hex now. And we won't have any danger moving in. But we also don't have any movement penalty, so we can actually use our third movement, if we wanted to, to move back out. The missile tank, same thing. You have the potential of being disabled if you move into the rubble, or two hexes to move in. So you can see normally a missile tank can move two hexes. So this is what it means when you talk about two movement points to enter. And we'll see if we can get something that will disable here. There's a two. So these, this unit is now disabled, and you can see that by looking at his uh, status effects. It shows currently disabled by terrain. So what this means is he is now disabled for the turn, and if an enemy unit tries to attack him, uh, it's more likely that he'll be destroyed. The disabled units are easier to kill. So that's something you want to try to avoid, if at all possible. Next up, towns. Okay, light tracked units. Again, we're talking about missile tanks and light tanks. Towns cause two movement points to enter, and defense strength is doubled. Okay, so we're going to look at town hexes here. So we've got our missile tank here, and we've got a light tank here. The light tank can move three hexes per turn. So if we use him to move, we can get to this town hex because we can go one, two, three. And the game wants to avoid doing that and come in along the road, which is fine. You know, the net result is the same. But the important thing to understand here is that because of the two movement points that it costs to enter the town, coming in from the side forces that issue. So if we come in from here, our missile tank can move two hexes per turn, one, two, but he cannot go one, two because it was, this would be the equivalent of one, two, three. So that's too many movement points. He doesn't have enough, he can't do it. Okay, so now the other important aspect 
of the towns is their defensive bonus. So these two light tanks are currently in a town, so they're getting their defensive bonuses. You can see that they have a defense of 2, and it shows that it has a defense of times 2 on its status effects information. So, if we go to our firing phase, we can target these, and you'll see on the bottom here how it shows its defense is 2, but the times 2 bonus gives it a total number of 4. So you can see because of that 4, we're going to have to add multiple units to get enough firepower to kill it. So if we tried using a light tank to attack, that only has an attack strength of 2 against its defense of 4, so it's a 1 to 2 attack, we would need a 6 to kill it, where normally it would only be a 5 or 6 to kill it with a 1 to 1 attack. So we can add more units to make that attack stronger. So now I have 5 attack strength against a 4 defense, which gets us up to a 1 to 1 attack. So as you can see, even with rolling a 2, normally that would have been a disable on a stronger hit, but that was no effect. It didn't do anything at all to the uh, light tank. Uh, it's a relatively easy target to hit, so being in the towns makes a big difference. Ridges and streams. Ridges are pretty straightforward. The unit simply cannot cross them. The streams, a unit can cross, but it must start its movement next to the stream in order to be able to cross. So if we take a look at our ridges first, these are not full hex terrain. These are hex side terrain, so they're in between. So if we try to cross a ridge, you'll notice that this light tank can't move anywhere on the other side of this ridge line. It has to try to go around. And if we pick the other one, same thing. It can move up, but it can't move over. Streams on the other hand, the units can cross them, but only if they are completely adjacent at the start of their turn. So this one can move across, but you'll notice he can cross the first stream, but he can't cross the second stream. So even though normally they get three hexes of movement, he can't use that going this direction because the third one would be crossing the stream that he was not next to at the beginning of his turn. So the best that he can do is come across and then go sideways along the stream. This one not being next to it at all can't even cross the first stream. And the same thing goes for missile tanks next to the stream, can cross and move up. Missile tank not next to the stream, can only move one hex, and then has to stop or go sideways. Roads, railroads, and water. Roads give a road bonus to light tracked units. So you get one extra hex of movement if you start your movement on the road and stay on the road the entire time. So a light tank that can normally move three hexes per turn can move four hexes per turn if they stay on a road. Missile tanks can only move two hexes per turn normally. They can move three hexes per turn if they're on the road. That can be very important for scenarios like blindsided where you have to try to get a lot of missile tanks to catch up to an ogre. 
The other thing that the roads do for you is they negate the terrain that they go through. So in the case of the light tracked units, the problem of forest, for example, costing two movement points to enter, the road negates that so that that is not a penalty. So if we take this guy here and we move him three hexes, he can go one, two, three. And because he's coming in along the road, he can actually move into this forest hex. Normally he wouldn't be able to because that would cost two, so that would have been four coming in from normal terrain. So now another example of the road bonus. This light tank here normally moves three hexes per turn. One, two, three. This would be the normal movement. But because he started on the road and finishes on the road, he can get his fourth movement. And you can see a similar thing for the missile tank. You'll notice two things that happen here. The penalty for the town of two movement points is negated and he gets the road bonus on top of it. So instead of the normal movement, which would have just been two hexes and stopping here, he can actually go one, two, and then his third hex along the road. So towns are very helpful for speeding up units on the map. One important thing to note with the railroads they do not give any movement bonuses to light tracked units. One thing that the railroads do allow, however, is essentially what they're providing you is a, is a bridge over the stream. So this guy can still do his one, two, three. So even though he doesn't get a road bonus for the railroad, most units are able to use the railroad bridges to get over different terrain. So getting over streams, getting over water. Light tracked units also are not able to go into water at all. So full hex water terrain, they can't traverse that at all. But what they can do is they can use bridges. and come along and use the road across the bridge and that lets them get across the water. So that's the end of the light tracked units tutorial. If you found it helpful please like the video and subscribe for other tutorials. If you have any questions leave them in the comments below. Thank you.